Just travel to Ukraine if you can't afford a Chinese wife. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another video from Ling Ling. This video is yet another uh, AMWF video. Asian male, Western female relationships. Yes! <laughs> In this video, I'm just going to be on my own because my friends are really busy traveling around all over the place. So I hope that's okay that you're just gonna hang with moi. <laughs> Anyways, okay, let's get started. I'm just very happy. I just, you know, haven't talked to anyone all morning. So, you know me. I'll try to whew, calm down, calm down. Remember, if you have any questions about AMWF relationships, you can send me a message on my social media, laying around Instagram or Facebook, or send me an email on info at laynaaround.com. In today's video, we are going to talk a little bit about Western women not having any requirements when dating or marrying Chinese slash, slash, slash Asian guys. So without further ado, let's just get into this little video. I have a lot of Chinese followers and sometimes some of the guys, they sent me some very interesting news articles about Chinese marrying Western girls. It's very nice to read, it's very romantic, and I'm like, oh my god, that's so nice, everyone's so happy. But then, again, I also remind myself that these are Chinese news and, you know, about media and news articles. Like, don't trust them too much, you know? <laughs> yeah, so after reading them, I always text the guys who send them to me, I always text them, remember, there are also cultural differences, there are also this and this and that. Okay, I have three different stories I want to talk to you guys about. I will try to share the links below for the stories. I think one is translated. I'm not sure about the two other ones, but I'll try to see if I can find them. Story number one is about a Chinese worker, a migrant worker who has moved from the countryside to the big city and now he's building big buildings and he married an Eastern European woman who is living with him in his little dorm. They live in these small like tents or boxes, I don't know what it's called, like out on the street until they finish the building and then they move on. The woman, she has a little baby. Well, they have a baby together, of course. Yeah, and then she's just cooking for the man and he is working very hard. Everyone is like, oh my God, the Western girls don't have any requirements. How amazing is that? No matter how poor or how rich you are, they still wanna be with you. So cute, so romantic, right? Yay. <laughs> Story number two is about another Eastern European woman who married another Chinese farmer. The farmer, he, well, he was from the countryside and then he moved to the big city and he went to university. That's where they met, then they had a baby and then she was sent back to his old hometown, not old, his hometown to stay with his mother for one month to sit the month. I've been talking about this in my live streaming from last week. I'll put a link up here so you can check it out if you want to. You can also learn what sitting the month means. Anyways, she was there in the beginning, not so happy in the countryside, but then she became really good friends with the mother-in-law and everyone just lived happily ever after. So cute, right? <laughs> Story number three is even more romantic. There was this poor Chinese man, he moved to Ukraine. Eastern Europe again. Guys, do you see a theme here? Yeah, okay. He moved to Eastern Europe, to Ukraine, and he started university there. He never really did well in Chinese school, but then when he came to Ukraine, he started learning Ukrainian language. Then he met a beautiful woman. They got married, had a beautiful baby, and now, like seriously, the whole Chinese internet is so jealous because he got a big house in Ukraine, a beautiful woman in Ukraine, a little baby, he has a lot of money. Well, I don't know how much, but you know, according to Chinese standards, maybe, maybe they're exaggerating, I don't know. But yeah, basically that's like, the story, yeah. So everyone just lived happily ever after. This guy who was nothing in China, he went there and now everything is just beautiful. His life is perfect. After this story went viral on Chinese internet, he opened a club for single Chinese men. He sent them over to Ukraine to teach them how to date Ukrainian girls. 
because according to Chinese stereotypes or Chinese, I don't know, like, yeah, I guess it's stereotypes or media, um, Ukraine has the most beautiful girls and Western girls, they have no requirements when dating and marrying. Yeah, can you see where I'm going here, guys? Okay, so first, just wanna say, these three stories, I don't know how true they are. I know that these women are married, I know that they had babies, I'm not sure if they're still together, I'm not sure if they're happily married, I'm not sure if the Ukrainian girls, they came from really poor places, or if it was just love at first sight. I don't know much about this apart from what I read in the, in the news article, right? But one thing that um, kinda um, tricks me is the fact that Western girls, they have no requirements for dating. I don't know if you know much about the dating, the dating in China, right? So in China, many girls, they have really high requirements. When they're dating a guy, he should have an apartment or a car. He, he should very much have both, that would be great. If he doesn't have it now, then he should buy it before they would get married. Mm. Right? Okay, so if you know anything about prices here in China and how much people they earn, then you will also know that sometimes it's almost impossible for the guy to buy a house or an apartment here. A car is okay, but apartment, right? So, Western girls, they don't want that, right? We want equal relationship, we want passion, we want love, and we want a stable home, but we don't need him to buy an apartment first. We're like, we can fix that together. We're two people in this together. So what just makes me a little angry is when the Chinese media kind of advertise for Western girls, when they put it out there like, you should go to Ukraine and get a wife because there they don't need, they don't need you to buy a house. They don't need you to do anything. You just go. And it sounds so easy and it makes us sound like a product, guys. I'm not from Ukraine, but I, I feel the Ukrainian girls, you know? That's why I really want to share this, because I'm like, we might not have these kind of requirements, but then we have other requirements, such as you should probably learn our language, you should understand us, you should listen, you should be there for us, you should respect us, you should be able to work together with us, be there with us for the rest of our lives. Yes, it's not so hard financially, but then there are all these other like emotions and cultural differences. Like that's what I feel like the Chinese media, they leave out every single time they make another, another stupid story about a Western woman who is marrying a poor Chinese farmer. Oh my God. Like these farmers or these Chinese guys from the countryside, I'm not saying these people are dumb or it's bad or anything. I think it's great that you find your love somewhere. But they just don't mention all these cultural differences and language issues. And like these women, they must either be fluent in Chinese or the guy, he must be fluent in English or they must have needed each other. And not everyone is the same, right? So when I meet Chinese guys and they say, oh, just in introduce me to a white girl, because it, then I'm like, it's just not that easy, guys. It's just not that easy. I feel like the media is lying and it makes me, mm, uh, okay, chill. <laughs> I don't even know where I want to go with this. I just want to share these media stories and ask you guys what you think about them because I think they're totally foolish and stupid, you know. It's great that they're sharing lovely romantic stories, but they just don't share enough about the struggle between the two cultures. Of course, I just want to add that I'm sure the Eastern that Eastern Europe is more family oriented and might be closer to Chinese culture. Like I've heard this before and I've met a few girls from Eastern Europe as well who married Chinese guys and they wanted to marry early. Like I've met a Russian girl who was like, yeah, when I was 20, my parents started like, come on woman, <laughs> get married. And another girl from, uh, from Romania who said the same, who was also getting married really early. So of course, some of them, the culture might be more like closer to Chinese culture, but I've also met a bunch of Eastern European girls who are just the same as me, you know, who are just like, we're having fun, we're just, you know, going out and, um, how to say, like developing ourselves, 
learning from the world and then at some point we hope that we're gonna bump into the right guy. So I just really want to point out here that we might not have those financial requirements, which I also think is very like bachelorlistic. I only want to marry you if you have an apartment and a car. It doesn't matter if I love you or not. Well, I do love you, but you don't have a car, so I'm sorry. I'll wait for the next train. I don't know. Like I'm, I just feel like Chinese girls. If well in the bigger cities anyways. Like Chinese girls are very independent already. I feel like this is very old tradition that should just, you know, we should be equal guys. You should help out your boy. Like, ah, oh. I actually have a few Chinese friends where I'm like, you're such a lovely person and I don't want you to marry a Chinese girl if she has those kind of requirements for you. Cause I just, like, I, just, I don't want you to go through that kind of struggle, you know? <laughs> Let me know what you guys think about this issue. And as I said, I'll try to put the links for the different articles uh, below and share with me if you've seen other articles similar. It's very interesting. It's an interesting topic. Let me know if you agree with me. Let me know if you don't agree. Let me know what you're thinking. And thank you for watching, guys. Please remember to subscribe and give me a thumbs up and follow me on Instagram, laying around Facebook and Patreon if you feel like it. And and I'll see you again very, very soon. Ling Ling Sao, see ya and zai jian. Bye bye.